Hi folks, my name is Sining Ma. You can call me Stephen. Today, my Scylla Summit presentation topic is Key Key Value Store, a generic NoSQL data store with tombstone reduction and automatic partition splitting. I'm a senior software engineer working in Discord persistence infrastructure team. Discord is a voice, video, and text communication service used by over 100 billion people to hang out and talk with their friends and communities. I joined Discord in 2021, and I'm mainly developing and maintaining backend services on top of ZillaDB. And uh, the key key value store service is a generic NoSQL data store solution. And this service has many database specific complexities from developers. Through my presentation, I will use a short name KKV for this service. I'm planning to dive into this service following this agenda. We will first start with why this service is necessary and what features are provided for making a developer-friendly key-value service. After that, I will go through several implementation details and explain how this service safeguards developers against CLADB performance complexities through a tombstone reduction mechanism and automatically splitting of large partitions. So first, let's start with why Discord wants to build this service. So as Discord, we have many use cases where entities are identified by composite primary keys. The composite key consists of a parent ID and an entity ID. A good example is an emoji in a Discord server. This emoji is identified by a server ID and an emoji ID. And the entity data is stored as a binary blob so that no database schema migration is needed. Besides create, get, and delete entity requests, we want to support range scan of entities within one parent ID. We are highly willing to build an easy and fast solution to onboard new use cases and quickly iterate on the data model. The design of this service is intended to avoid building a new table when onboarding each new use case. We do not want to do database schema migration when iterating on the data model. We have used CLADB in production for quite a while and learned several CLADB specific pitfalls. This generic KKV solution mitigates potential performance costs associated with Tombstone and avoid too many entities stored in one CLADB partition. And we will talk about these optimizations in the implementation section. Discord infrastructure is built on Google Cloud Platform. You may want to ask, why not consider to use Google Cloud Big Table? So actually, this is a very good idea, and we explored it when we designed KKV. Big Table stores the key as a string, and it can scan rows giving a key prefix. So this means we can concatenate multiple different key data types together. It's a DCP service with simple administration and easy for operation work. However, after we discussed with Google PMs, whether DCP Cloud Big Table is one zone per cluster. And our use cases require read after your write consistency rather than eventual consistency. So Big Table client must do single cluster routing, 
but single cluster routing does not provide auto failover. Therefore, we decided to build KKV on the Scylla GB, which has multi zonal deployment and a column read and write. Okay, now I will go over features that are provided by this service. KKV supports to have multiple namespaces and all entities of a use case are stored under one namespace. The stored data payload is in protobuf binary format with an upper data size limit. This does not support partial updating a subset of fields in an entity and offers no guarantees of synchronized read or write on the entity. So this means clients have to use read or write locks to guard against these conditions. Now let's dive deep into the implementation. So first, I want to show APIs provided by this service. We have APIs to create, update, get or delete an entity giving a parent ID and an entity ID. KKV provides a powerful range scan API where clients can scan a series of entities under one parent ID. The range scan API can specify a start or an entity ID, limits the number of entities returned, and whether the returned entities should be sorted by entity ID or not. The entity data serialization to protobuf binary and deserialization from protobuf binary are done in the client. As I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we want to mitigate performance impact of tombstones. When an entity is deleted from CLADB, CLADB does not purge it, but write a tombstone. Excessive tombstones could increase read latency of failures from CLADB. And as Discord, our replication factor is three. So this means if tombstones are not written to three replicas, this results in resurrection of deleted data after tombstones are deleted as part of compaction. On the right side of, the, of this slide is the application tombstone approach that we came up with. When the delete API receives a request, KKV executes a consistent level or delete query to CLADB. If this deletion succeeds, the tombstone is, is, is written to three replicas. But, but if it fails, KKV column writes an application tombstone to the binary blob. And then KKV publish, publishes a retry deletion message to Google pops up. If we're looking from the get API, the stored entity has, if the stored entity has an application tombstone, KKV will resend the retry deletion message to Google pops up after some retry interval. A subscriber of Google pops up executes the retry deletion message with a consistent level or this query and then exit the message if succeeds. Otherwise, take away next the message and the Google pops up will re-deliver the retry deletion message. You can see this approach ensures the, the entity deletion must succeed after retries. So this allows us to set DC grid seconds to zero on the table where entity's data is stored. The other pitfall is that if all entities under one parent ID are stored in one shard, we could have large partitions issue. Large partitions could cause hot spotting and slow queries. To solve this problem, we do not store all entities of a parent ID in one partition shard. 
in our design, the Scylla DB cluster for KKV has two tables. One table stores partition info metadata, and the other table stores the uh, entity data. From the side, you can see the schemas of these two tables. The primary key of the partition info table is namespace and parent ID. Normally, the partition info field only has values set for the current partition number and the current partition ID. The next partition number of shards and the next partition ID is, is a zero. While doing resharding, KKV generates values for the next partition number of shards, the next partition ID, and stores them along with the current partition number of shards, the current partition ID in the partition info field. Before the sharding process completes, any entity creation update is hashed into both old and new partition shard. The binary entity data blob is stored in the entity data table where partition key is partition ID, partition shard ID, and the clustering key is entity ID. After an entity is stored in CLRDB, KKV queries the current number of entities stored in each shard. If there are more than a certain number of entities in the shard, KKV updates the partition info table with the sharding metadata. The number of shards for the next partition ID is twice of the number of shards for the current partition ID. And after successfully updating partition info table, KKV will send a resharding message to Google PubSub. The Google PubSub subscriber will execute the resharding process. So the next slide is about the resharding process. When the subscriber consumes the resharding message, it starts some validations first. After confirming this is a valid message, KKV starts to copy data from shard of the old partition into shard of the new partition. Each entity is rehashed, giving the number of shard on the new partition. And each write call to the data table has client-side speculative retry enabled. Once all entities are copied successfully, KKV grabs the distributed log and update the partition info table to the next partition metadata. In the end, KKV will clean up the data stored in the old partition. And between each step, the resharding state metadata is saved in CLRDB so that any failure can be retrieved efficiently. Our KKV service is written in Rust programming language on Tokyo runtime. Tokyo is an event-driven, non-blocking I.O. platform for writing asynchronous applications. We rolled out KKV to production in 2022, and currently it serves more than 20 use cases, and more use cases are planned to be added soon. It takes an engineer, engineer only one day to onboard a new use case in production. And we received many good feedbacks about this service from our engineers. So far, our team didn't encounter any production incident caused by CDRDB. OK, that's all for my presentation. And thank you for, so much for your time to join today's presentation. I have my LinkedIn and GitHub handles available on the slide. If you have any questions, please keep in touch. Thank you.